All right. Uh, good morning. I am Robin Summer version 0.8 beta. Um, <laughs> And uh, I have a few things to, to cover in the, regarding the Bro project and the uh, trajectory of the uh, Bro system and the like. Uh, first, Bro 2.6 will be out um, ideally in a couple weeks. Uh, the beta is out already, and uh, feedback is great, you know, really helpful for the beta. Someone was telling me yesterday that, you know, they had performance issues with it. You know, please take stuff like that to the mailing list so we can figure out uh, what's going on. I'll give you a brief preview. I'm not going to go into any details. Uh, Keith sketched a bit of this yesterday. So um, one of the biggies is internal. You won't really see it unless you're uh, working uh, sort of uh, lower level bro stuff, but a complete redesign of the uh, communication fabric used by uh, components in bro to talk to one another. And this is going to give us lots of flexibility in the future for richer, um, uh, building r richer compositions of uh, elements uh, that all speak events and values, bro values. Um, dynamic typing has been added in a safe form. Uh, so this is uh, uh, also in support of such messaging. Now the messages can have uh, uh, types that are only interpreted at runtime. Uh, the configuration framework for making it much more regularized and easy to parameterize scripts. Uh, Johanna's talked about that in the past. Um, a bunch of SSL enhancements, including support for uh, stapling. Uh, updates to the logging and file frameworks. I'm not going to sketch the specifics on that. Um, a bunch of updates to various protocol analyzers. Um, some changes to the language to sort of make it a, a little easier to use. Um, so case insensitive patterns, the ability to, regular expression patterns, the ability to uh, create patterns dynamically, um, some set and vector operations so they're not quite so clumsy to use, and bitwise operations um, so you can do things like and, or, xor, and so forth. And then um, some tracking of, uh, TCP level events such as the window closing or repeated retransmissions or repeated uh, checksums. So, so that's that's the bulk of what's there. Um, again, please test it out if you if you can run the beta and provide feedback. Um, the next item is concerning governance of the project. So um, we uh, the Bro project has been under the auspices of the Software Freedom Conservancy for. Uh, since I think 2015. And uh, as was blogged about um, on the uh, Bro blog, uh, we've parted ways with them. And this came about uh, essentially because as the Bro project has grown, it's been increasingly a mismatch for what SF, uh, SFC, uh, both their sort of um, uh, conceptual goals and uh, their, how their services scale. So the project has moved back to the International Computer Science Institute, uh, which is a long time home. In fact, the project moved there arguably when I started at ICSI in 1999, um, and uh, will continue it out, out of ICSI. <coughs> Europe. Um, we had our first European event uh, last month in Karlsruhe, Germany. Uh, it was uh, quite successful. Um, Sold out more than a month in advance, 50 attendees, day-long event. Um, and so given that success, we're going to have a second workshop. It'll be at CERN, uh, the huge physics lab in Geneva, um, April 9th through 11th of next year. Um, and we will post further information to the mailing list as uh, the logistics firm up. In general, feedback about uh, regional interests in Bro would be really helpful. I think the, the leadership team in the project is just not clear on where are those other uh, places outside uh, the US or North America that um, would benefit from events and where there's uh, growing communities. Okay, I wanna really do uh, shout outs for package contributors. Over the last year, uh, we had about three dozen packages added to the package ecosystem. 
And uh, th this is great. This is really, I think, um, one of the main ways that Bro can uh, grow and in uh, power available to people. And uh, the package uh, uh, ecosystem is, makes it easy for you to contribute something without having to closely integrate it into Bro. Uh, and makes it easy for you as a user to you know, try stuff out. And uh, you know, if it's not for you, then you just don't uh, need to run anymore. So um, I went through uh, the metadata for the package manager, which had pointers into GitHub. And then I used the GitHub user account to attribute stuff. So if you don't like how your package has been attributed here, um, come talk to me, and we'll figure out better ways to do this in the future. Um, but I just went to the GitHub uh, user account and, and however they were identified. And if they had a company, I added that. Um, and I also had to make some decisions, you know, who to shout out to. If you added two lines of code to something, you didn't get a shout out. But if you added, uh, you know, a significant fraction of the code, um, then you did. Um, so just in alphabetical order by uh, contributor name, we've got the uh, fingerprinting of SSH that we heard about yesterday. We've got support for PF ring, uh, high performance packet capture, and Indes, uh DAG capture cards, high performance. We have uh, community ID hash support, which is a way to uh, for Suricata and Bro to agree on how to talk about the same sort of event. Uh, log writers, um, some work on the Quick protocol. That's Google's uh, uh, sort of uh, innovative transport protocol that they they uh, continue to evolve. Um, we have some uh, identification of different versioning. We have the analyzers for. Um, protocol used in financial transactions. Uh, support for uh, types of log filtering, other packet capture, uh, fingerprinting of clients. We heard about that yesterday. A uh, bunch of stuff for the Intel framework, uh, fix, you know, detect particular problems in certs. I'm giving you this list so you get a feel of sort of the breadth of things and also um, just the, the utility of, of what's out there. Um, Packages to detect cryptocurrency mining. Uh, another package to um, detect use of quick. Uh, looking at SMB version one activity. <coughs> managing um, uh, blacklists of IP addresses. Detecting types of scanners and brute forcing. Uh, integrating Bro with uh, Vast. You've heard about Vast at previous BroCons. The, sort of repository for archiving events that um, T.S. Valentine uh, did as his PhD and is now at, at Tensor is developing uh, HTTP2. Um, logging to Kafka, uh, the usual ton of stuff from Seth. Um, content security policy analysis, um, Intel uh, framework indicators to both look for them and report uh, back into the, the cloud about seeing them. And I apologize if I'm mischaracterizing this stuff. This is just as I've been able to glean it. Uh, parsing user agents and uh, connectors for exporting to um, uh, outs uh, bro logs into databases. So if you can see it, uh, there are URLs there at the bottom, packages.bro.org. Keith also flagged that. And so th it, like I said, this is great. And we really want to um, encourage uh, growth of the packages and maturation of them. You know, uh, one way to contribute is to add a new package, but another is to refine an existing one. And uh, if there are hurdles to that, we would love to know. You know, what, what makes it hard to contribute packages? Okay, so um, there's one more thing to discuss with the community, um, and that is renaming the project. So. Back in, wow, <laughs> 1995, um, I picked the name Bro as, uh, as the original paper says, an Orwellian reminder that uh, with the power of monitoring comes the power to violate privacy. And uh, you know, that, that has been near and dear to my heart um, ever, ever since that time and continues to be. It really creeps me out to be building such awesome privacy violation 
viol potentially privacy violating technology. Uh, on the other hand, it thrills me to build awesome network security technology. And that tension's fundamental. And so it, it was fundamental enough that I wanted the name to reflect it. We've been discussing at previous BroCons um, that the name today is just really sends the wrong message. Nobody is hearing that name thinking George Orwell. Um, they're instead thinking about bro culture, um, which is a really anti-inclusive message. Um, and indeed, you know, we heard at uh, BroCon um, 16 and 17, people recounting how they would go to their management and say, hey, well, I want to try this bro thing. The management would say, you have got to be kidding. Just could not believe that that could be any sort of uh, mature software project. Just seemed like a complete um, uh, tone deaf uh, recent, you know, uh, lark. And so um, we gave this a lot of thought. And, and, you know, and as the originator of the name, I gave it a lot of thought. But to me and to others on the leadership team, uh, it was clear. This is, you know, we want to be in today looking forward and, uh, you know, it's, it's regrettable to have to lose a name that has uh, a lot of history to it and means a lot to people and it's provided great puns. Um, but that was the right thing to do in, in multiple ways. And so um, after BroCon last year, we suggested community, uh, to the community to make suggestions. Got more than 400. And even after weeding out the complete trolling, <laughs> <coughs> got more than 300. And uh, in fact, the trolling got weeded out like on day two of this process, this month long process. So there would have been an enormous amount of trolling otherwise. Um, in part because we got press as being wimps to you know, change our name from uh, the manly bro uh, just due to political correctness considerations, which I mean, my, my idea is just, you know, it's far from how, uh, how we actually reflected on, on the, the need to change. And so, and these names had all sorts of sensibilities and rationales from the, you know, um, quite clever to the sort of, you know, whimsical, ridiculous and, and the like, and there, there were a lot. Um, and, and we struggled. So the leadership team went through them and um, called out ones that they thought we thought were viable and uh, had to remove a lot because they would have issues with rights. They would either uh, infringe on a right or they would sound a whole lot like some company out there and it just, that wouldn't be good. And at the end of all that, um, we didn't have a viable set. We didn't have agreement on how to move forward. So, we decided to engage with a branding team to try to find candidate names. And, uh, and th this is an interesting process. If you haven't been through it, it, it's a lot less glib than you would think it is. And in particular, um, part of what the branding team does is ask you to surface, you know, what do you care about? What, what are you trying to convey? Um, and so the connotations that we put together were, well, you know, we. The tool is really cool because it provides insight and visibility. Like that a lot. Um, we really value the quality behind the name Bro. The fact that you know the thing is solid. It is going to um, do what it says, and and it's we're and if it's weak at something, we try to expose that fact and like so. We wanted to convey that soundness. We wanted to convey that, you know, it's flexible. It's a, like a platform. You can build on it. You've got all sorts of possibilities. And we liked the academic heritage of Bro, and, and in particular, Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, which is the birthplace of Bro and, and has played a vital role in its evolution all, since the mid-'90s uh, and continues to today. And so, all, you know, those, that's the wish list, and you're not going to get all that at all. <laughs> And as, as we explored this and got candidate names and kicked them around and the like, um, we identified that, you know, we're, we have a fondness for these quirky names. So a lot of, a lot of what comes out of the branding team is, is names that are, you know, they're, they're um, kind of polished. And 
And we, we realized as we were trying to assess, you know, why does that one not really uh, 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 pop out for us that we like these quirky names? And one name, quirky name, goes all the way back to uh, Bro's origin at LBL in the 90s. Uh, and it grew on us as we discussed it. All right. <laughs> now, I've been through naming before, and uh, I have learned this truth that, you know, generally you're not going to like the name. You know, at the end of the day, changing names are hard, and you don't get everything you want, right? I, I showed you the four things we wanted. We're not going to get that. Um, however, I also learned that, you know, in a bit of time, you actually, the, the name just just the name. So given that, I want to tell a little bit of history. So there we are back in the mid-90s, the network research group at Lawrence Berkeley Lab. And um, you know that group for producing TCP dump and libpcap and BPF and bro and uh, other stuff. And, and we were um, big fans of the far side uh, back at, at LBL. And one cool thing about the far side was you know, it has a great source of names, you know, like, like Fifi is just an awesome name and Muffin there. And, uh, you know, here's another one where, uh, you know, Sparky, that's, that's a great name. Really like Sparky. And then uh, there's these more sort of out there names like, you know, the Mailman. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a pretty out there name. Um, or you can, you know, kind of go beyond names and start thinking about names like Sucker Up. <laughs> and so here is the er email from where we're going. And I like how Craig, so Craig was a member of the group, still is, um, how he starts this, the things you figure out what, well, out drinking. And so Craig's trying to fix up some Kerberos problem, et cetera. But in the middle of this email he sent me uh, in March of 95, he says, what should we call the the account, Montrace monitor tracing account, the account, the pseudo account, Unix account associated with the monitoring, the 24 seven monitoring, you know, scripts and so forth they're putting together. And he says, how about the name Zeke? Comes from the far side. And I replied to him uh, a couple days later saying, I've got a fire, far side calendar and today's is the legendary old Zeke and the chainsaw, that last one you saw where Zeke could fire that sucker up. And sure enough, um, that's the name, and this is the oldest email I could find, and, and it's only buried in there, but you'll see that the, uh, the actual user sending this email was Zeke at localhost. So uh, with that, uh, I want to prepare you for this notion. <laughs> and, Thanks. And if you go to Zeek.org right now, uh, you will find the Zeek network security monitor. Um, and if you go outside right now, you will find Zeek t-shirts and laptop stickers. So with that, uh, we're out on our break. <laughs>